Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overtracker magazine and today I'm here to talk to you about the XPG Lancer Blade DDR5 6000 CL30 kit. So the whole point about Blade is that it's supposed to be cheaper than the regular Lancer kit but more than that as well, it's supposed to be a shorter dim because as I've been told, as, as the website suggests, people who are using air coolers want a dim that's a little bit shorter than the regular dims that they sell which are part of the regular lancer series however this is the rgb version of the blade kit there is a non-rgb version as well so the thing is though the diffuser that they use for the rgb actually makes the kit a bit taller than the regular non-rgb version so I, I don't know how that's gonna work and with that said as well I have to tell you that I actually don't know what the price of this memory is. At the time of this recording, I had been waiting for a price right, from local retailers and so forth, but I couldn't get one. So I can't tell you about the value proposition of this kit because I just don't have the price. What I can say that I'm hoping that it's at least like 2,200 at most, or maybe 2,100 or thereabouts. But then again, this is a value orientated memory kit. And I think, or rather it's quite evident how XPG extracted more value from this kit is to just completely forego the Lancer heat sinks and go with this blade heat sinks. So the difference here is that these heat sinks are much lighter, they're much thinner, and obviously just cannot tolerate the same sort of heat output that the regular Lancer kit can. So what happened is that even though I could get into Windows and run some benchmarks at DDR5 8000, doing 8000 needed 1.45 volts. On any other day, that wouldn't be an issue at all. We are used to that. There are kits that are selling at 1.45 volts for those sorts of speeds. So there's nothing out of the ordinary there. However, because of how thin these heat sinks are, they are not able to tolerate 1.45 volts at those frequencies. So what ends up happening, it means that your effective limit for this memory is 1.4 volts or DDR5 7600, whichever way you want to balance that. Keep in mind that if I'm paying 2200 or somewhere around there for memory that can do DDR5 7600, that's really awesome, right? That's really cool. With that consideration, it is rather, it's like a gift and a curse at the same time. So you're paying very little, hopefully for the memory that can do 7600. But at the same time, you're like, damn, I wish these heat sinks were a little bit better so they could tolerate the temperatures that or the, the heat output. Because again, when I ran, um, I think the MEM test or Karu MEM test or TM5, I'm really not sure. But one of those, I ended up recording a peak temperature of 59 degrees. And that's with a fan blowing on the memory, which is something that's never happened with the regular Lancer kit. But with that said, you have to realize that you are paying entry level prices for this memory and for me personally i think 7600 is more than enough especially since we've seen that ddr5 7200 at relatively good timings is all you basically need right to get the most out of your particularly your intel 12 13 or 14 gen core cpu right 7200 is basically where you're going to start getting diminishing returns regardless of how high you get unless of course you can run 8400 8600 or some exotic speed like that so you've seen the benchmarks you've seen the results and despite the thin heat sink despite the height that or the promise of a low profile dim that didn't necessarily materialize with this rgb kit i think in as far as value for money goes, what is there to fault here, right? You are paying, what is that? Almost like $100, $105 less than that for memory that can do DDR5 7600 at CL36. So there's really nothing to complain about there. The memory is delivering in terms of performance. It's definitely delivering in terms of assumed price. And with that combination, I think xpg has done a fairly decent job here the only thing that i would would have loved to see is the blade series get its own line right like caster has its own line and lancer should have its own line because right now what ties this blade kit to the lancer series i wish i could actually confirm the price of this memory but i can't but nonetheless if you're able to get it at some point for 2200 or if you're in the us like 90 dollars or something consider it may not be as good as the regular lancer kit but i think it's good enough or close enough and besides as we said before ddr5 7200 is 
probably what most of us are going to need or at least not much more than that either way that's it from me let me know what you guys think below are you considering buying the kit would you even buy the kit do you actually do you even know of a better value for money kit out there that i haven't uh, uh tested or i'm not aware of let me know in the comments below but until then remember to share like subscribe and i'll see you guys on the flip side so take care and peace